how to color grade in Premiere Pro. Let's go. So we are at the computer and if you would see that this is a footage from my Shirambu vlog, the Danes in India thing. If you haven't seen it, the cards will be somewhere there, ignore the bottles. Anyway, now the thing is, this is a scene from there and uh, I currently am on the color tab and I am using waveform luma. I just use this because it's helpful for me most of the time. Now, uh, the one thing that you have to learn from this is you go to the color tab, you go here and you find the Lumetri scope spanner. Then you click on this spanner or wrench and you find it from Luma. If you can't find it, it will be under the waveform tab. Number two is this white thing should not touch 100 and the blacks should not touch zero because 100 means that is clipping there is no more detail on the highlights it's just pure white and zero means there is no detail in the blacks it's just pure black either one with that said i use an adjustment layer so that i can delete my edits if it's too much and i don't have the time to delete all of them or i just want to copy and paste it to another clip that i feel that i that it needs it with that out of the way to the actual edit. First, you're going to select the actual clip, not the layer, just for this layer. We're going to take this white balance selector and we're going to click on something that should be white on me. That will be this poster. And you see that this is adjusted apparently white balance is more or less okay. And let's start with the edit. Let's try and down, put the exposure down a tad bit. Well, I think it's a little bit too much. I'm not trying to go much. We're going to decrease the highlights. Uh, let me just increase the highlights rather. So I'm trying to increase the contrast. Increase the highlights, increase the shadows just a little. Always keep looking at this section. Nothing should touch zero, nothing should, uh, you know, touch a hundred. So keep that in mind. Increase the blacks is touching a hundred right here, and the highlights can go a little bit up, right? And the whites can too because it's still right here. Okay, that's enough for the contrast. You can also manually change the contrast from here. That too you can do. One thing to remember about contrast is that it will definitely change the saturation of them. We are not not going to change from the contrast menu, we are going to do that from the curves. We'll get to that. We're going to come down and we're going to increase the white prints. So what I have learned is white prints is much better than saturation because saturation just increases the density of the colors and white prints is much better because it's not trying to absolutely wreck your photos or videos for that. When we go down the curves, we're going to create an S curve. This will most definitely add a little bit of, uh, or should I say, contrast. And as you can see, it's looking okay for now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's decrease the white prints for a minute. So I think it's a little bit too much. All right, this looks good. Now I'm going to go down to the curves and let's say I want to increase the saturation of a particular color. I'm going to take this eyedropper to go to this part and increase the saturation. Just remember if you are increasing one part, it will just increase all the others, so don't overdo it just that much. Okay, I think that's good. Or should we just leave it? Let's just leave it. This is for increasing the saturation of the hue. This is hue versus hue. So this will just change the color. So if you want the reds to look a bit more orangish, you can do that. If you're going for that particular look or pinkish, you can do that too. Just don't do this. This will look absolutely worse. Don't do these kinds of things. This is for the luma settings or the brightness settings. So if I pick the set between uh, here and I decrease 
And I don't think we need to do those things, right? This video does not uh, require them, so I'm not gonna play with it. Maybe I can take the yellow and take its saturation up a bit. Maybe that will look good. I don't know, let's try. Bring it up the saturation. Yeah, it looks good. Now remember, sometimes when you are looking at just one part of the video or photo and it looks good and you look at some other part and it looks horrible, please don't do that. You are trying to get an accurate look for the video. So yeah, don't make this adjustment so hard that one part of the video looks absolutely horrible. Once you are satisfied with what you can do with this, then you go down to color wheels and you pick colors for the different parts of your image. And this is what color grading actually is. Till now, what we are doing were mostly color correction. Now, it comes down to color gradient. When I take the thing, I will put, let's say, let's go for the orange and green because it's just a classic thing to do, right? So you're gonna do all the cliche things. And we're gonna go down a bit, up a little bit. Always remember, pick opposing colors from the color wheel, or you can take analogous colors too. So, for example, if I go this way for the shadows, and I go this way for the highlights, this does give like looks bad. Don't get me wrong, but this is also a color scheme according to graphic design. Let's not do this. This will absolutely look horrible over here. Let's go with the orange. Let's go with steel here. Let's go with red here. Okay, now we are happy. Then, it's fine. If the exposure is good, you don't really need to play with the midtones. I'm not going to do it either. Let's fast forward. Yeah, it looks good, right? Then we can go to the HSL secondary, and what this does is this can help you select certain colors. We don't need it here, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to go to this key thing, take a color, and let's say I take this color, and I say color slash free. Now you can see that it selects that color, and this is where you can see the range of the hue. If I move it, You can see more of the red gets included, right? And then you can select the color from different saturations. As you can see, if I increase the range of the saturation, it increases the amount of reds that get selected, right? Okay. Then you can go to luminance, and you can also select the different brightnesses of the color. Anything that is not gray is now selected. You can choose whatever version of selection that you like. And once you are done with that, let me just say that, you know, once you are, uh, actually let's say I want to select this part, for the heck of it, right, let's select this part. For the heck of it, let's, uh, okay, maybe this is a good one. And then we can, I'm sorry, did the camera move anyway? Then we can, of course, use this part of our color wheel to change the color of the selected area. And we can increase or decrease the hue, making more green or less green. So this part controls the hue, and this part controls the saturation. You get the idea, the temperature. Decrease the temperature. Now remember, this is only selecting the areas that are not gray. Uh, only working on the areas that are not gray. This does not affect the entirety of your image. Which is a good thing if you are trying to go for selective color gray. We are not trying to do this, so we are going to just uncheck the entire thing. Yep. Not doing that. Uh, by the way, I just realized, 
I used the adjustment layer and then I forgot to use the uh, colors of that layer. So if you're doing it, please be careful, don't be like me. This is it. This is what there is for color grading as we know it. You First, you go with basic corrections and the, the layers are selected that way. So you go to basic correction, you fix the white balance, you change the exposure and highlights and the shadows. Then you go to the creative section, you choose the right reference and uh, then you go to the curves. You do what you want with the curves, you go to color wheels and you just the color wheels. And then if you're feeling really, really special, you can add some vignette. Now, this needs to be done very carefully because if you if you do it right, you can actually bring focus to the center. All you have to care about is this should not look like this. It should look like, but it's naturally different. Okay? Don't make it so bad that it doesn't make sense. Get it? It shouldn't look artificial. The entire thing about photo or video editing is shouldn't look artificial. Please be careful with that. Thank you. See you again in the next one.